Hi there. So let's continue our 365 days through the whole Bible. We are on Job still, chapter 17 through 20 today. Now let's jump over there and we'll read through it, shall we? <clears throat> now Job is continuing his talk, lamenting, whatever you want to call it. Hmm. My spirit is broken. My days are extinct. The graveyard is ready for me. Surely there are mockers about me, and my eye dwells on their provocation. Lay down a pledge for me with you. Oh, this is what there's, his mockers are saying. Lay down a pledge for me with you. Who is there who will put up security for me? Since you have closed their hearts to understanding, therefore you will not let them triumph. He who informs against his friends to get a share of their property, the eyes of his children will fail. He has made me a byword of the peoples, and I am one before whom men spit. My eye has grown dim from vexation, and all my members are like a shadow. The upright are appalled at this, and the innocent stirs himself up against the godless. Yet the righteous holds this way, and he who has clean hands grows stronger and stronger. But you, come on again, all of you, and I shall not find a wise man among you. My days are past, my plans are broken off, the desires of my heart they make night into day. The light, they say, is near to the darkness. If I hope for Shoal as, as my house, if I make my bed in darkness, if I say to the pit, you are my father, and to the worm, my mother, or my sister, where then is my hope? Who will see my hope? Will it go down to the bars of Shoal? That's hell. Shall we descend together into the dust? Now, Bill Dad is going to speak. Another one of his so-called friends, right? <laughs> and Bill Dad, the shoe height, answered and said, "You remember, Bill Dad, the shoe height, said before that um, God will make you happy again, and, and God will bless you." And right now, he's saying something different. Bill Dad, the shoe height, answered and said, "How long will you hunt for words? Consider, and, and then we will speak." Why are we counted as cattle? Why are we stupid in your sight? You who tear yourself in anger, shall the earth be forsaken for you, or the rock be removed out of its place? Indeed, the light of the wicked is put out, and the flame of his fire does not shine. The light is dark in his tent, and his lamp above him is put out. His strong steps are shortened, and his own schemes throw him down, for he is cast into a net by his own feet, and he walks on its, on its mesh. A trap seizes him by the heel, a snare lays hold of him. A rope is hidden for him in the ground, a trap for him in the path. Terrors frighten him on every side and chase him at his heels. His strength is famished, and calamity is ready for his stumbling. It consumes parts of his skin. The firstborn of death consumes his limbs. He is torn from the tent in which he trusted, and is brought to the king of terrors. <clears throat> in his tent dwells that which is none of his. Sulfur is scattered over his habitation. His roots dry up beneath, and his branches wither above. His memory perishes from the earth, and he has no name in the street. <laughs> he is thrust from light into darkness and driven out of the world. He has no prosperity or progeny among his people, and no survivor where he used to live. All his kids have been killed. They of the west are appalled at his day, and horror seizes them to the east. Surely such are the dwellings of the unrighteous. Such is the place of him who knows not God. Mm -hmm. So he's accusing him of not knowing God. And then Job's going to answer him again. How long will you torment me and break me in pieces with words? These ten times you have cast reproach on me. Are you not ashamed to wrong me? And even if it be true that I have erred, my error remains with myself. If indeed you magnify yourselves against me and make my disgrace an argument against me, know then that God has put me in the wrong and closed his net about me. Behold, I cry out, Violence, I am not answered, but I am not answered. I call for help, but there is no justice. He has walled up my way so that I cannot pass. And he has set his darkness upon my path. He has stripped me from my glory and taken the crown from my head. He breaks me down on every side, and I am gone. And my hope is, has he pulled up like a tree? He has kindled his wrath against me and counts me as an adversary, as his adversary. His troops come on together. They have cast their siege ramp against me and encamp about my tent. 
He has put my brothers far from me, and those who knew me are wholly estranged from me. My relatives have failed me. My close friends have forgotten me. <laughs> the guests in my house and my maidservants count me as a stranger, and I have become a foreigner in their eyes. I call to my servant, but he gives me no answer. I plead with him with my mouth for mercy. My breath is strange to my wife, and I am a stench to the children of my own mother. Even young children despise me. When, when I rise, they talk against me. All my intimate friends abhor me, and those whom I loved have turned against me. My bones stick to my skin and to my flesh, but I have escaped by the skin of my teeth. <laughs> have mercy on me, have mercy on me, O oh my friends, for the hand of God has touched me. Why do you, like God, pursue me? Why are you not satisfied with my flesh? Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that an iron pen and lead they were engraved on the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at last he will stand upon the earth. After my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. If you say, How will we pursue him? And the root of the matter is found in him. Be afraid of the sword. For wrath brings the punishment of the sword, that you may know there is a judgment. Now, Zaphor is speaking up, another one of his friends. <laughs> the wicked will suffer. Then Zaphor the, the Namathite answered and said, Therefore my thoughts answer me because of my haste within me. I hear censure that insults me, and out of my understanding a, a spirit answers me. Do you not know this from old, since the man was placed on earth, that the exalting of the wicked is short, and the joy of the godless but for a moment? Though his height mount up to the heavens, and his head reach to the clouds, he will perish forever like his own dung. <laughs> Those who have seen him will say, Where is he? He will fly away like a dream and not be found. He will be chased away like a vision of the night. The eye that saw him will see, no, will see him no more, nor will his place any more behold him. His children will seek the favor of the poor, and his hands will give back his wealth. His bones are full of his youthful vigor, but while but it will lie down with him in the dust. Though evil is sweet in his mouth, though he hides it under his tongue, though his, he is low to let it go and hold it in his mouth, yet his food is turned in his stomach. It is the venom of cobras within him. He swallows down riches and vomits them up again. God casts them out of his belly. He will suck the poisons of cobras. The tongue of, of a viper will kill him. He will not look upon the rivers, the stream flowing with honey and curds. He will give back the fruit of his, of his toil, and will not swallow it down. From the profit of his trading he will get no enjoyment, for he has crushed and, and abandoned the poor. He has seized a house that he did not build. Because he knew no contentment in his belly, he will not let anything in which he delights escape him. There is nothing left after he had eaten, therefore his prosperity will not endure. In the fullness of his sufficiency he will be in distress. The hand of everyone in misery will come against him to fill his belly to the full. God will send his burning anger against him and rain upon him in, into his body. He will flee from an iron weapon, and br a bronze arrow will strike him through. <laughs> it is drawn forth and comes out of his body, the glittering point out of his gallbladder. <laughs> wow. Terrors come upon him. Utter darkness is laid for, up for his treasures. A fire not fanned will devour him. What is left in his tent will be consumed. The heavens will reveal his iniquity, and the earth will rise up against him. The possessions of his house will be carried away, dragged off into the day of God's wrath. This is a wicked man's portion from God, the heritage decreed for him by God. Well, with friends like this, who needs enemies, huh? You think he's talking about evil people in general, or just, or he's talking about Job here? You yeah. know? Yeah. So, he's complaining. You know, Job did say at the end that his Redeemer lives. And he will still pursue him. So, there you go. That's the reading for today. Job 17 through 20. And tomorrow it's 21 through 23. There's like 43 chapters in Job. So, this will go on for some time. Till we get to something different but there you go that's the 365 days 
through the Bible in chronological order as the events actually happened. Day 8. So, we'll continue this. Keep reading along. See you next time.